dear students today i am explaining the next bit of the topic distribution law today we have to see the modified form of distribution law whenever solute undergoes dissociation so see towards the ppt's with the help of ppt's we are now explaining the dissociation of solute in solvent solute is a substance which get distributed into the another solvent whenever we are adding solute x into two, two solvents solvent a and solvent b then what will happen solute x distributes itself into the solvent a and solvent b but what happens in some cases or sometimes that solute x gets dissociated into the one of the solvent or in both the solvents also in today's bit we have to see the how the solute x is distributing in solvent a and b but during the distribution of solute x into the two non miscible solvents which are in contact with each other that is solvent a and solvent b whenever we are adding the solute x then it distributes into the solvent a but in this case it is remaining in the normal condition means there is no change but whenever x enters into the solvent b then it does not remain in the normal condition some of the molecules of x gets distributed gets distributed in the form of dissociated molecules means in the solvent b solute x is in two form some molecules are in a normal state and some molecules are in a dissociated form after some time there is also equilibrium setup between the undissociated molecules of x and dissociated molecules of x in the solvent b at the same time molecules of x in the solvent a and molecules of x in the solvent b they are also achieving the equilibrium then we have to see the next ppt suppose the solute x is present as normal molecules x in solvent a and it dissociates into a plus b in solvent b the equilibrium set up in the two solvents as shown in the figure c1 be the concentration of x in the solvent a and c2 be the total concentration of x dissociated and undissociated in solvent b means in this case c1 is the concentration of solute x in solvent a and c2 is the concentration of solute x that is the total concentration of dissociated and undissociated molecules in the solvent b then if the degree of dissociation in solvent b is x means in the solvent b solute molecules of x dissociated into the a and b if the degree of dissociation in solvent b is x then x the value of x is 1 minus x the value of x 
is a is x and b is for x hence the concentration of undissociated or the normal molecules in the solvent b is c2 into 1 minus x applying the distribution law to the normal molecules in the two solvents c1 upon c2 into 1 minus x is equal to kd this is the modified distribution law when there is dissociation in one of the solvents now i am explaining the modified form of distribution law when solute undergoes dissociation why it is necessary to modify the distribution law that we have to see first what is distribution law distribution law is c1 upon c2 is equal to kd means what c1 is the concentration of solute in solvent a and c2 is the concentration of solute x into the solvent b means in this case c1 is the concentration of solute in the solvent a and c2 is the concentration in the solvent b in the normal condition of the law this law is applicable in at a constant temperature and whenever the solute is in a normal state in both the solvent solvent a and solvent b means c1 and c2 are the concentration of solute x in solvent a and solvent b but condition is that the molecular state of x solute x should be same in the solvent a and solvent b and hence in that condition at the constant temperature we can write c1 upon c2 is equal to kd this is the normal form of the distribution law but in some cases what happens for example weak acids succinic acid or oxalic acid when you are added into the liquid pair which is immiscible one that is ether and water then what happens such a condition occurs solute x shows the dissociation in one of the solvent and in that condition the normal law that is c1 upon c2 is equal to kd cannot be implemented as it is whenever solute x added then what happens that solute x gets distributed or become soluble in solvent a and solvent b whenever we are adding x solvent solute x then what happens some part of the x solute x gets distributed into the solvent a and some solute some part of the solute goes distributed into the solvent b means whatever the solute which we are adding that solute is distributing in solvent a and solvent b but in solvent a it is remaining unchanged there is no any change but whenever it enters into the solvent b then it dissociated means this x solute x some molecules remaining into the normal condition and some molecules goes dissociated and forming the a and b a and b type of molecules means solute x whenever added into the immiscible liquid pair having solvent a and solvent b in that condition solute shows the dissociation in one of the solvent in this case solute x shows the dissociation in the solvent b x dissociate and forming the a plus and a plus b type of molecules but solute x molecules remaining unchanged are the normal they are in a normal state in the solvent a whenever such dissociation occurs in one of the solvent for example in this case in the solvent b it shows the dissociation x dissociate and forming the a plus b then we have to see what much dissociation takes place the degree of dissociation if we are considering x x is the degree of dissociation then 
for the solvent B, we can write equation X is giving A plus B. Means sum of the molecules of X shows the dissociation into A and B type of molecules. If the degree of dissociation is small x, then we can write the values of x 1 minus x and value of a is small x, value of b is small x. Then the concentration of normal molecules in the solvent B is C2 into 1 minus x being the concentration is 1 minus x. Means in the solvent B, there are two types of molecules. One is normal molecules and second are dissociated molecules. Means in the solvent B, there are two types of molecules which are undissociated and some are dissociated. And in that dissociated and undissociated, there is an equilibrium setup also. In the same method, there is also equilibrium setup between the normal molecules of X in solvent A and the normal molecules of X in solvent B, there is also equilibrium setup. Then we have to apply the distribution law for the normal molecules of solvent A and normal molecules of solvent B. C1 is the concentration of solute X in the sol solvent A. C2 be the concentration C2 be the concentration of solute X into the solvent B which having the both the concentrations of normal molecules and the dissociated molecules. But the concentration of normal molecules only is C2 into 1 minus X. By applying the normal distribution law or distribution law to the normal molecules only, C1 is the concentration of normal molecules in the solvent A, C1 upon C2 into 1 minus X. This one is a concentration of the normal molecules only in the solvent B. Means in solvent B there are two types of molecules. One are undissociated, that is the normal one and some are the dissociated molecules. We have to consider here only for this here for, for in this purpose or in this equation only the concentration of undissociated molecules or the normal molecules in case of the solvent B. This concentration is C2 into 1 minus X. By putting the concentration of solvent so, uh, solute X in solvent A in case of normal molecules only and concentration of normal molecules of X in solvent B is C2 into 1 minus X. C1 upon C2 into 1 minus X is equal to KD. This is the equation of the modified distribution law. Whenever the dissociation of molecules of solute X taken place into the solvent B. But there is also another possibility. Dissociation may be taken place in the solvent A and the molecules of X that is solute are remaining normal or unchanged or there is no any change in the solvent B also. Means dissociation is taken place into solvent A and dissociation does not taken place into the solvent B. In that case, the modified form of the distribution law is as C1 into 1 minus X upon C2 is equal to KD. This is the another form of the distribution law whenever the solute shows the dissociation in the solvent A. But there is also another possibility. In the another possibility, what will happen? Solute molecules of X shows the dissociation in solvent A as well as in solvent B means in this case also and in this area also or in this solvent also in both the solvents it shows the dissociation and in that case the modified form of distribution law is in this way c1 into 1 minus x upon c2 into 1 minus x is equal to kd 
this is the modified form of the distribution law whenever a solute molecules shows the dissociation in both the solvents and these are the two forms of the modified forms of the distribution law whenever solute shows the dissociation in one of the solvent this is regarding the modified form of the distribution law whenever solute molecules shows the distribution shows the dissociation in one of the solvent or in both the solvents this is the equation for the nest distribution law whenever the solute undergoes dissociation